Good evening. I'm Terry Hopefully, I'm the executive director of the foundation. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm um, honored to have George Ayu and Sandy Wilmer to do the speaking this evening for the essay. But I just want to kind of introduce myself. I'm going to learn along with you because I haven't been through this. Um, I've been on the job for a little over 100 days, I'm not telling. Um, but I feel in like I'm back in school. It's a big learning curve for me. So in saying that, I'll turn it over to Kim and she can start. Hi, my name is Candy Weemers. I'm the Programs and Marketing Coordinator for the GIPS Foundation. Um, I'm also the Scholarship Administrator, so I run the scholarship application. So if you have questions, you can always ask me anytime throughout the process. Now, you guys got to smile at me once in a while, okay? This is the first. So smiles are good. Um, we are recording this. That's why I've got the lapel. Um, we're recording this, and it'll be up. Um, we'll put it up on our website. So if you want to go back and hear any of the great things that George will share with you, because I'm just going to give you some stuff to get you started, uh, but George Ayub will um, take you through. Everybody get one of these packets? Okay. And then um, is everybody hooked up to the Wi-Fi? Because there's some of the stuff that we're going to show you that's kind of interactive. If you want to kind of skip ahead a little bit, because I'm going to show you some of the stuff in the, in the, um, on our pages, which I'll get you to this page right here. If you want to go to this uh, website that's right up there. There's a lot of things I'm going to show you is going to be off of this page. I really suggest bookmarking this page. Anything to do with GIPS Foundation scholarships is going to come off of this page. Okay. So it's going to have the application link, which it's not active right now because that doesn't happen until December 1st. Um, but it's going to have important dates. So you know what dates it starts, what dates it needs to close, initiative points, those kinds of things. The scholarship guidelines will be on here. Frequently asked questions, which that's what's in this little outside packet. A lot of those things um, are questions that I get asked over the years. Our scholarship events are on this page. There's handouts and there will be the slideshow from tonight and the recording from tonight will eventually get put up there. So all of this stuff will be on the page um, for the scholarship essays. There's also one on there and there's a flyer in here that talks about scholarship fair. I hope you guys bookmark um, December 1st. Um, that's when we're going to have a big scholarship fair and um, lots of great information's in there. And I'll talk about it a little bit, but there's a flyer for it. And how to claim a scholarship once you get awarded scholarships. Did everybody find this page okay? If you do bookmark it. If you get to this page, there's a part on there that talks about the guidelines. Go ahead and click on the guidelines. And I want to show you what a guideline is because we're going to talk today about how to do scholarship essays. Um, I kind of roughly counted. Um, we have, um, I'm going to say about 110 scholarship guidelines that produce all the scholarships that we give. And um, of those, I would say about 20, 25% of those have, a, have an essay that's required. So you can read through those and um, those guidelines to find out more information about them. Does anybody have one pulled up? If not, you can look at it here. Um, this one right here is the Kaufman Cummings Trust Scholarship. When you look at all of our guidelines, what they're all going to have up at the top, they're going to have like a little story little background information about who and why they're offering this scholarship. It's going to have the amount in terms. That's important. That tells you how much the scholarship for, how many years they might offer that scholarship. Most of our scholarships are for one year, but we do have some that are four years. It'll have the eligible, uh, the number of scholarships. Like Kaufman Cummings, that one um, awards six. So those are six um, $1,000 for four-year scholarships. So that's an example of that one. But then it's going to have the eligibility requirements. That's really important to look at. And those are going to be embedded within the application on the scholarship page, um, on the essay page when you get to that. Because if you don't meet those eligibility requirements, you don't need to write an essay. Okay? Concentrate on the ones that you do qualify for. Okay? I'll tell you the hardest thing when we get ready to do the review is when we go back and um, I see these, uh, these um, applications pop up for review. And all they have is NA or they have a dash. And if you showed up in the review, that meant you were eligible. You just didn't fill out the essay. So make sure you read the eligibilities. The terms of payment is going to be on there. And these links are going to be in the application. This is why you want to look at the um, scholarship guidelines. Because when you go to write an essay and a scholarship essay, because the scholarship essay is going to be different than any other kind of essays that you've wrote. Um, because a scholarship essay is extremely targeted. One, you're only going to have, and I think I talk about it on the next slide, 
um, you're only going to have 500, about 500 words to answer the question. So they're going to be really kind of short. Um, so it's a short essay. But when you go to look at them, you want to re um, research and read that top part of those scholarships. Because if, if they have an essay question for, for in our process, then that is the most important thing that you can do to, um, to try to um, win that scholarship. If they're asking you a specific essay, then that's the most important thing that's in there. So you wanna read that and um, figure out who they are. There's gonna be tips in there, like um, the Emilio de Leon. It'll have some things in there about his life. You probably could Google him, maybe find out some more. Jeremy Buckner's another one that you can do things like that with. Um, Sam Foltz is another one that you can do things like that and find out a little bit more about them and find out why they wanna give the scholarships. And then of course, look at the eligibility. This is a sample of what it looks like. There's a whole page within your scholarship application that's for scholarship essays. And I just wanted you to see like, this is the daily own line right there. And it has the eligibility right above that essay space. So you can look within the application. It's just kind of a little quick cheat sheet just to verify, yep, I think that is one of them that I qualify for. So I wanna make sure that I do that one. Like I said, they have a max of 500 words. When you're writing these special essays, Okay, because in our application, we have required essays that are more general in nature and everybody has to do those. But when you're writing these specialty ones, make sure that you're reading that prompt, write to that prompt, make sure it's personable, make sure it's you. Um, when the scholarship reviewers, because I work with the scholarship reviewers, when they're reading these essays, um, how you write it is very important when you get kind of to that, um, uh, you're kind of trying to make those tiebreakers, but they really want to know what you're saying. They want to hear your story. They want to know how you're connecting with it. They like to know that you connected it to who's giving the scholarship. This is a big one. And I know how, who, who here loves writing essays, right? There you go, Mr. A.U. <laughs> right? I know, I know that it takes a lot of work to do that, right? Don't be tempted to use the same essay over and over and over again. We have some scholarships that ask very similar questions. I will tell you that on those review sheets, because we have them review them in groups, the worst thing can happen to you is that they're reviewing and say you're looking at basically the same essay for like three or four scholarships. Because that meant you did not look, did not try to make that personable, you know, type thing. And that is the worst thing that you can do. Okay. So I know it takes a little bit more effort. But if you start early, which you guys are here, so that's great, kudos to you. Start early when you sit there and look at that stuff, but um, don't be tempted to use that same one over and over again. Now you can tell the same story. I mean, maybe there's something that's about the different things, but go at it at a different approach. Tell another angle about it, you know, um, but just don't use it over and over again. We have one, this is a little plug for our scholarship application. We have one application that you fill out and that's for up to 160 different scholarships. When I said that about 115, we're still adding this month, um, kind of seeing where our scholarships add up um, before our December 1st open date. Um, but they produce about 160 or more scholarships. That's um, uh, over 460,000. I'll tell you the last several years, we've been over 500,000 that we've given in scholarships. And the scholarships range anywhere from 250 to $220,000. And our scholarships are available for all majors and all degree types. That is one thing that I track when I go back to see, did anybody apply that was not eligible for any one of our scholarships? And I'll tell you, it rarely happens, you know? So there's something in there for everybody. Last year, the class of 2022, of the GISH seniors that completed an application, 72% of them were offered a scholarship. Now, see, get organized, right? Create a Google folder. And that's something you guys have done before, right? Create a Google folder just for your scholarships. You can have different folders within there, have one in there for the GIPS Foundation, have one in there for the Greater Grand Island Community Foundation, whatever ones you're doing, have a different folder in there. Also have in there and stuff like that, do a resume. Have you guys done resumes already in class where you started gathering information, writing down your activities, what things you've been in, those types of stuff? Put that in that folder. That's why it's always quick and easy for you to reference and find. If you got your AT, uh, ACT scores and you got a PDF of that, put that in that folder. So you just kind of keep collecting all that stuff because once you've used it once, you're probably gonna need to use it again and possibly other applications. Save your essays. When you're doing your essays, create a Google doc for that specific essay. 
What I suggest doing is taking this prompt, write the name of the scholarship on the top of the page, write the prompt, maybe put the eligibility, put all that stuff at the beginning. And then as you sit there and go through, you can sit there and think of like, okay, they're sitting there asking me about this, or this is a fine arts one, so I need to put this down. Or, you know, they're wanting to know what obstacle I've overcome. You can kind of put those things down on that, and then you can start writing from there. The bonus of doing that, as you guys know, right, that makes it very easy to share. So that you can find that teacher, you can find that person that can sit there. I think somebody's trying to get in. Yep. Um, you, and it's very easy to share to get an additional feedback. You know, and, and do do that. If you can have, a, I mean, have a friend, have a teacher, your parents, we like reading that stuff, right? <laughs> we we'll probably are reading it, looking over your shoulder, but share it with us and stuff like that and get that feedback. Hey, hi. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, just grab one of those. Yep, thanks Mason. So just save your essays in, in that folder. It just makes it super easy. The other thing about saving it in there and stuff like that is when you are uh, doing another application, maybe there's another question that's very similar. So that you already have that, then you can take it and you can rewrite it, rework it for that particular thing. Now, this is the other thing I'm gonna say um, is um, start thinking about references. Our application, you have to have two references. So be thinking about who you wanna ask. I suggest, and especially parents wanna sit there, have them ask in December. Okay, teachers get really busy the longer the process goes. So the sooner you can ask them, have your uh, your uh, resume ready because your references like to look at the resume, um, have that ready to help give to them. Um, in our application, you have to have an academic reference and you have to have a general reference. That general reference can be a teacher, it can be a coach, it can be an employer, it can be whomever as long as they're not related to you, okay? So you could be thinking about those things, but I would ask those questions and try to get those out. Um, in December, if you can, definitely in January. Okay, everybody's nodding along. Do I have any kind of smiles once in a while too? Okay, see, that's the thing, because if we're recording this, if you fall asleep, make sure it's behind the camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, scholarship fair. This is my last plug before I turn it over to George Ayub. Scholarship fair, mark this on your calendar, December 1st. Um, this is a collaboration between our foundation, the Grand Island Public Schools Foundation, the Greater Grand Island Community Foundation, and um, gear up. I will tell you between um, our foundation, the GIPS Foundation and the Greater Grand Island Community Foundation, we are the largest scholarship providers in this area. So what we're gonna be doing there at the fair, we're gonna be giving presentations and we'll be going into the pages. I'll be giving you hints on the different pages. You know, what are the common things that, that trip students up? What are the important questions you wanna make sure you answer right? That'll be at that. There'll also be um, free professional photos. And I know you guys all want to have your photos taken again, but parents, please encourage your kids to come do that. Um, currently, right now, everybody has all the selfies, you know, or the Instagram kind of photos for senior pictures. Um, my daughter right now, she's in college. She's using her professional photo all the time when she's communicating with her professors. So you'll get a free professional photo that's done by Tally Creative. Just by attending, you can get in a drawing for $500 scholarship. Um, there'll be two of those. Um, and we're also going to have a FAFSA workshop. So there's some information that you can fill out ahead of time but you can go in and you can actually work with Education Quest and be completing your FAFSA that night. So it's a great night. So mark that on your calendars. Okay. Well, hi, I'm George Ayub. Um, I do this every year for the foundation. I am actually an employee of the foundation. Part-time, I'm the alumni liaison, which is a really nice term for a really old guy that went to school at senior high. So um, <clears throat> Candy gave you a lot of great information. I'm going to repeat some of it, but uh, my job tonight is to remind you to follow the things that Candy talked about in terms of filling out the forms correctly and do, and, and, and that sort of thing. But I'm also going to talk to you about two things about your, your essays, and that is what you say and how you say it. And Candy mentioned in equal parts, in equal parts, those are very, very important. So that's what we're gonna do uh, in about 500 words, which is usually the what they say, do tell me who you are in 500 words and that type of thing. And with a half a million dollars available, you know, I think it's good that, that tonight, so congratulations. I think it's really important to do this. So um, first of all, uh, Candy said, who likes to write essays? Well, I do, but you know, that's, I'm, I'm weird, I'm a word nerd, I've always been a word nerd, I like to write. But writing as a discipline is a really important thing. 
And the research shows, you can, you can read this, but when you get out of college, uh, when you uh, get into the workplace, you will primarily communicate through writing. That's just what we do. That writing might be a text, but it also might be an email. I communicate with my students at Hastings College via email. And when I send them an email, I'm sure, uh, you know, it's properly punctuated and uh, because I want them to see what a professional email looks like every time I communicate with them. So it's important in that sense. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to need to, you're going to need to be able to write when you go to college, when you go to college, you will write papers, not just in English class, you will write papers in almost all your classes. You know, most of them will be research papers. So <clears throat> it's a good place, it's a good time for you to, to get keyed in on that because you'll be able to communicate in writing in the workplace. And then the last thing is it's, it's a factor in success in what you do. So um, I know it's a torture for some people, it's okay. You can get through it. Carrie, when she took the job, came to me. Terrified. Terrified. Because <laughs> we put out Rise every two every two months, and she has to write an article for Rise, and she was terrified about it. And it's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. It just, sure. you know, it takes time. It takes time, and it takes an effort. I mean, and so good for you. Okay, so... I'm going to sprinkle a few little sayings about writing that I love in here. And the first one is, you know, open a vein, it, you know, to let you know that this is an important thing. This is an important thing. If somebody says, well, tell me about your character. Words, it's an important thing. So, you know, I can't stress that enough for you. And, and the other thing is that it's so important that you're here because you can write a really bad scholarship essay. It's still better than the one that nobody wrote, isn't it? It's better than the one that somebody didn't write. So that's not a plug for doing a bad job, but it is a plug for doing the job. Thank you. And here's some other things about confidence. So, you know, as seniors, you should have some confidence because I know that you have been taught the techniques and skills of writing throughout middle school and high school. And I know uh, teachers like uh, we have at senior high introduce those skills to you and have you work on those. So you should have some confidence, not only um, in writing the essay, but in knowing who you are, you know? So just some things to, okay. So uh, here we are tonight, scholarship fair. Just remember those dates and all that, of course, is in what you have. Okay, so I've broken this into seven easy steps, all right? To write the essay, we, we have some example essays. And then we have time for questions. But if you have a question at any time, please interrupt and ask me the question. All right. So Candy's talked about the types of scholarship. It's really important to understand what your task is. Um, I, I, oftentimes I have a student turn in a, a paper and I'll go, well, this is a great paper. Unfortunately, it wasn't the assignment, but, you know, it, and it's because it, somebody hurried through it. They didn't quite understand, didn't want to ask a question. Is this, is this what I should be doing? So know all that information there. Have that in your mind. That's part of your game plan here. And if you are here, if you are here, that's okay. That's okay. Time's wasting a little bit, but, you know, it, just know where you are with all that. Know where you are. Okay, so... In Alice in Wonderland, the king said, start at the beginning and go to the end. That's, it sounds simple, but I told my students the other day, famous study and from high school students in California, the number one thing were, that caused students not to be successful in high school was they did not finish, didn't complete an assignment that they had started. Number one thing, start at the beginning, go to the end. You can't start at the end. Now, you might have this great idea in your mind about what you're going to write in your college essay, but you still have to start at the beginning. There still has to be a blank sheet of paper. All right. So here we go. Okay. Number one, you have to have a process. You have to have a game plan. I walk around when I teach, so please don't. I, I just, I don't like to stay in one place. 
So um, be sure you read the directions carefully. Andy touched on that. You'll be ahead of people if you do that. All right. Um, and so it, as you start this process, you're going to develop a little game plan. And so tonight is, is really the beginning of this game plan for you. Uh, so when you encounter a, a scholarship that you want, do all the things here. Know the background of the scholarly, scholarship, who you're writing this for, what the directions are. Are you eligible? I heard Candy say, I was out getting a drink of water, but I heard you say, don't mess with scholarships that you're not eligible for. Don't do that. All right, it's a waste of time. Um, and then the essay part is obviously going to do that. The audience, the audience, of course, are we have we have scholarship readers, but that's that's just for the ones that come through us. You might apply to a scholarship uh, through. Uh, my wife used to work at Home Federal Bank. They give a scholarship, and they have people that read them at the bank. Right? Yeah, and uh, we used to when I worked at the newspaper, we used to give scholarships and. People from the newspaper read it. So, you, so know that information. Know that information. And really know what, what do they want? What do they want from me? What is it that I need to tell them? So Jeremy Buckner was a gifted athlete at Grand Island Senior High School, state championship hurdler, uh, uh, great football player, uh, and uh, tragically killed in a car accident. He was a police officer in southeast Nebraska. Uh, <clears throat> so in this scholarship, why are you applying for this scholarship? Well, it's really hard to say why I'm applying for the Jeremy Buckner Scholarship if I don't know anything about Jeremy Buckner. So that research is really important, really important. Uh, and so you can fire up the electronic Google machine and find a lot of information, okay? You can find a lot of information about the type of person he was, what his accomplishments were, the tragedy of his death, that type of thing, his family, his family's still here in Grand Island. Uh, so lots of things in that. And then also, same with Sam Foltz, very good close friend of my family and my son. Same thing with Sam. So <clears throat> this is what they say. They want to know what your dreams are. Yeah. They want to know what your dreams are and how do you get from there to your dreams? How do you get from here to your dreams, rather? And Sam was really, what was important to Sam was this humility that he, he wanted to always keep, even though he had incredible success in his life. Uh, he always meant he wanted to stay humble, you know, farm kid from Greeley. That was his big thing that he was always saying. So they tell you in this one, the directions are, they're going to look at, see whether or not you know Sam, just from the research you've done. And that can include talking to people who knew him, like me. All right, like his teachers and coaches at senior high. If you talk to Coach Tomlin at senior high, he will tell you about Sam Foltz. Those are the, that's the kind of research that you need to do to be really on top of something like this, this scholarship. Okay, so that's the first part. Got a little game plan going, get the process going. All right, so you need to, you need to ask yourself these questions. Um, what do they want? Who is they and how are they going to judge me? How are they going to judge me? Well, you can tell, for example, if I go back to the, oops, wrong direction. If I go back to this one, I know what they're going to judge me. They're going to judge me on whether or not I've done my research on Sam Fultz. That's one of the reasons. You know, they'll judge me if I can spell and do those sorts of things too, but they'll also judge me on this as part of the assessment process. And can't, I think the best thing you said tonight, Candy, was don't turn in the same scholarship to all your scholarships. Sounds easy, cut and paste, out the door. Well, it, it won't work for you. All right. That's really a hard, that's, that's kind of a hard thing because, you know, you want, if you write an essay that just sings, it's, it, you know, this is the best thing I've ever done. You know, it's, it's really tempting. And I'm glad you were that. It's really tempting to do that. But use the elements that tell you about who you are, but don't, don't use the same essay, all right? Okay, so really important to know this. This is before you ever write a word down, before you ever write a word down. <clears throat> and if you have trouble with these, ask somebody. 
mom and dad, a teacher, a friend, somebody you know from church, a coach, somebody, ask them, what do you, what do you think this means? What do they want me to do? So you have an idea in your mind what's going on. So here's one of these questions that I find very difficult. This is very difficult. So the nice way to say this, how have your years at Grand Island Senior High shaped your character and prepared you for college? You know, the unnice way is, who the heck are you? That's just what they're asking. Who are you? What kind of a person are you? And tell them why you're that kind of person. You know, I'm a hard worker. All right. So tell them you have five jobs, straight A student, all that. Do that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay. And then there's two parts, right? So I'm that person. And how's that prepared me for college? Well, college is going to demand all these things. I'm going to have to work as well as go to classes, those things. So the, there's an and in the sentence. So they want two things. They want two things. So read that carefully. I think Kaufman Cummins is, hasn't changed this prompt ever, have they? Right from the outset, this has always been their thing. But these are the... This is a good one because these these type of like introspective questions that they that the scholarship people want, those are really common, you know, those are really common. Okay, another thing about writing. Even the rock can write, I think. Maybe not. It's got muscles though. Okay, third thing. Here we go. So you got a process, you got started, you got a little game plan. Now you're going to start writing things down. I just keep stepping your way. I apologize. Okay, so think about the question, bounce it. That By bounce it, I mean ask somebody else. Say, hey, I have to write this thing about my character. What if I said this? This is somebody knows you. What if I said this? What do you think? Or what do you think that means? Bounce it. All right. Bounce it or pitch it. That's the second thing. A brainstorm and a pitch. Pitch is a Hollywood term. This is how movies get made. What's your pitch? Well, I'm going to make a movie about this, this, and this. That's a pitch. You're going to say, I want to, your pitch is going to be the essay. This is, I'm going to say this about myself. I worked hard. I had, I had a full, almost a full-time job. I got straight A's. I played in the band. I was in the play. I did all these things. What do you think? I'm going to say that. And, and then after you say that, then you're going to pitch it. You're going to sell it. I am, I'm qualified for this scholarship because I can do these things. I can manage my time. All right. I can set priorities and follow them. That's what you're saying. So the brainstorm is the idea. The pitch is the sell. Great ideas. Sell it. All right. Sell it. So if you've done this, you have you have some information. You have some information right now. So then you go and you make an outline. Now, when I was in high school, if somebody said outline, I went screaming out into the hallway. No, I can't do that because that's not me. I am not organized in that way. People think writers are these real creative types, but you can't be a writer and be only creative because language is order. Language is order, but I can't make an outline to save my life. Just can't do it. I can't do it. The way what works for me might not work for you. What's your name? Mason, it won't work for Mason. You make outlines, Mason? Way ahead of me. We'll talk after you give me some hints. Okay, Mason, thanks. I can't make an outline, but something that works for you that is an outline, like for me, that would be notes. I want to do this. I want to do this. You know, sticky notes all over at home when I'm working on something. I have sticky notes all over. And, and you know, when you do that and you come to a sticky note and it says something, you go, well, what was that? You know, you don't know. It's like, is this for the grocery list or whatever? That works for me. Outlines work for some people. You know, it's really important too. if you're really good on your device, you know, you, know, you can, in docs, you can put the information in and then you can put it in a way that it will sub, you know, put subs for you and subs for subs. That's really helpful for some people. The point is, this is your first time you're writing down which, where you want to go. This is, you're starting to develop a map of where you're going for things, okay? Um, and of course, it's good to know where, you, where you're going. And so there's a rubric. Is that rubric included in here, Candy? It's on the website. Okay. To the yeah. Workshop. Okay. 
you'll find there's good rubric there and the rubric's good because that the rubric says well this is what's good well that's where i want to go so when you make your outline you want to make sure there's a line between your outline and the, the highest point on the rubric all right you want to make sure those two things are connected so i got a plan here all right so i said make a plan and know your stuff know your stuff what the scholarship is yada 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 all that and You've done some introspection. If it is a question that asks about your character, that asks that some sort of reflective question, you know that stuff. Make some notes about yourself. You know, I'm this, I'm this, I'm not this, I'm not this. In the examples you'll read tonight, I think, I think in each of the four examples, there's quite a bit of introspection. This is the kind of person, this is the kind of person I am in this circumstance, in this circumstance. Really good stuff. Okay, no, any questions so far? Good, thanks. Okay, the three C's, clarity, conciseness, and be careful, okay? Clarity, conciseness, and be careful. Okay, so I want you to be clear about what you say. I want you to say it in as few as words as you can. And I want you to be careful in the words that you choose. Now, as we go through here and the rest of these slides, I'll show you how to do that, okay? So the process that you need to worry about is when I say slap them upside the head, I added this so no one gets arrested. Well, I was arrested because I was writing my college essay and I slapped somebody. I don't want that to happen. But you need to get their attention. You need to really focus on the first thing I'm going to say. That doesn't have to be the first thing you write down, but you need to think about the first thing I want to say. The first thing I want to say. Okay, so you want to get a good start to your essay, a good start to your essay. So, um, you, you know, in, in school, we teach you the five paragraph essay, you know, is where you, you know, you tell them what you're going to tell them and then you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them, right? That's what you do. And sometimes they get kind of, don't tell your teachers I said this, but, you know, they're kind of boring. I mean, they, they, you know, and, but you also don't have to scream and yell at the beginning. So this takes some, this takes some thinking. Oftentimes it's in, the first sentence is the last sentence I write because I know what, I know what I've said. How do I best introduce that? How do I best get your attention, still make sense, and stay on the subject. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. In journalism world, we call that the lead, you know, because it's the most important thing. Okay, so now that I told you that the first part has to be really great, I'm telling you, you can't fade. You can't, be, you can't play good ball for three quarters and then give up the fourth quarter and the and game's over. You got to be strong at the finish as well. You got to be strong at the finish as well. So if the Islander marching band is doing a halftime show and they get to the last five minutes and everybody's out of tune, what will the audience remember that's there? They'll remember them all being out of tune. So start strong and finish strong. All right. So the lesson for me and I hope for you is that you, you, can't, you can't give up on any part of the essay. It all has to be good. All right. Every word in a 500 word essay, well, I wrote a book recently, 112,000 words. And I can tell you that every word had a reason for being there. Now it took me three years, I don't recommend this. But every word in a 500 word essay has a reason for being there, it should have a reason for being there. If it doesn't have a reason, don't, don't, do, don't put it in there. So don't fade at the finish. Start strong, be strong, finish it. Okay, um, land it. You know, I have a friend that tells jokes when he says, I got a really funny joke. 20 minutes later, the punchline arrived. When he says, I got a, a joke, I go in the other room because he just can't land the story. You have to, if you're going to tell me that you are, that you are as you, part of your character is perseverance, get to it. Don't tell me that in the first paragraph and then get to it in the, in the eighth paragraph. I will have lost interest. If you're going to tell me something that, and you name it, 
tell me, get to it. Now, the nice thing is, and I told you about every word having a reason for being, the nice thing about word limits is you got, you, you already, it's built in. If you're waiting to the 510th word to say that you explain your perseverance, too late. So you're kind of pushed to move that stuff further up in the essay, further up in the essay. So in that re for that reason, I think, you know, when I give my st college students uh, papers to write, I always give them a word, word limit. Part of that is I, my class is 40 students and I can't, 40,000 word papers. Poof. You know, I'm punch drunk by the time I'm done. But I give them that. Sometimes they go over. I don't ding them too much. But um, the lesson there, the, the skill is to say it in those few words. So it's kind of a good thing. It's kind of a good thing for you. Of course, there's also students when the word limit is 500 and they, and they turn to 183 words. Not happening. Yeah, not happening. Okay, that's your fourth, that's your fourth step to success. Okay, along that line, this is one of my favorite quotes. This is one of my favorite quotes. In, in a minute, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, don't use words you don't know the, the meanings to. All right? Okay. And Thomas Jefferson said, if you can do it in one, do it. That doesn't mean all your sentences are short. It just means that you should be economical in your writing. Okay, so... To that end, I hear, I'm going to give you some, these are little tips. None of these things I'm telling you are incorrect. The writing that I'm going to tell you not to do is not incorrect. It's, it, it's, it, they're all fine. Okay. These are things that will, help, that will help you be concise and clear. All right. So these are just little ideas that I, there's lots of them that can help you, but these are ideas that I use uh, does this thing have one of those lights on it? Hey, look at that. Very cool. Okay. So when you have words, these four words, this, that, these, and those. So if I say a sentence like this, you know, I went to the grocery store and I bought an ice cream bar. I got gas in my car and ordered a pizza and went home, okay? Uh, and said, uh, that was fun. Which, what was fun? All of it? One of them? I don't know. If I start a sentence with one of those words, you better let me know for sure what it is you're talking about, okay? So if it's in the middle of the sentence, like in this, like with this example, just name what you're doing, okay? Name what you're doing. So what I, what I suggest is that when you get done with your essay, search for this. This is really the offender more than the others. Search for the word this and look and see, make sure that, do I know what this stands for? Is it clear to me as the reader that what this is standing for? All right, that's first little rule. Okay, don't be redundantly redundant or wordedly wordy. I had so much fun writing that. Okay, she will be home in a period of three months. Well, really, she'll be home in three months. Okay, save yourself some words. All right, this is just common sense. She will be home in a period of three months. Is There's nothing wrong with that sentence, all right? It just says too many words. It, you, you wasted three words. She will be home in three months. All right, so here's, a, here's another, I think I have some more of these. It's come to my attention there's a vast proliferation of undesirable vegetation surrounding the periphery of this facility. Whew. All right, I've noticed many weeds growing around the building, All right? Okay, this is also, we'll talk more about this in a minute. This is also right like it's you because it is you, All right? Don't tell your English teachers I said this, but I know that it used to be popular for students to write a paper in the style of Mark Twain or in the style of John Updike or in the style of Alice Walker. No, it's hard enough to write anyway, isn't it? You should be writing in the style of Mason. So when Mason puts his name on the paper, that's Mason's voice. We call that voice. That's Mason's voice. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Okay, don't try to be somebody you're not. 
right in the style of who you are. So I, you probably know proliferation and periphery, but if you don't use them very often, don't use them, okay? That's just a lot of words. You don't need them. Okay, I'm, I'm going on with this. She was a woman who knew what she wanted because she knew what she wanted. All right, so you get the idea? You get the idea? Now, I'll tell you this, as a writer, I can tell you that when I write something, it is the absolute best thing ever written in the history of humanity. My first draft is, it's gold. It is gold. Well, I worked 25 years with an editor at the newspaper, and he never said my first draft was gold. Sometimes he said, this is ridiculous. This is terrible. You need to do this. So it's really important to not fall in love with your first draft, all right? And the best way to do that is to find somebody to read it. Find somebody to read it. Um, well, I'll get to that when we talk about editing, but you are your worst editor. Just remember that, okay? Because you, I'm, I'm my worst editor. I need somebody else to read it. We just put out Rise, put Rise to Bed today, I hope. And people were proofreading and geez, they found a whole bunch of mistakes I made. And it was like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for that. And nobody said anything bad about me. Okay, here's another. This, due to the fact that anytime you have these words together, the fact that, eh, don't use them. Don't use them. It's just, you can say it in a different way. That is a really debilitating phrase. Okay. <clears throat> So don't be redundant. Use as few words as possible. You can write nice, long sentences if you want, but make sure every word has a good reason for being there. Okay. Um, and then don't do, use phrases that don't make any sense. These are called pleonasms. You don't have to remember that, but here's some examples. They don't make sense because they're the same thing. Past history. Is history anything other than the past? It's just, it's one or the other. Okay, final outcome, same thing. You can go through that whole list. Um, I have a list at home of 500 of these just because I lose my mind sometimes when I write and I might say something like, it was a free gift. Right? Gifts are technically free, right? You're not gonna give me a gift and then ask for $5, all right? <laughs> it wouldn't be a gift, that'd be a deal, right? Okay, so, also, you need to read for read for those kinds of make sure it makes sense. Make sure it makes sense. Okay, active voice and passive voice. I know that all the students here and I'm parents, you know what this is. Active voice, the subject of the sentence does the action. Okay. Uh, I threw carry the remote or the clicker. I threw carry the clicker. I threw. I did the action. The clicker was thrown by me, there is the subject, but it does not do the action. The action was done to the clicker. We don't want that. The reason we don't want that, none of it is grammatically wrong, is because the sentences, the longer they get with passive voice, they get weaker and weaker, and pretty soon we don't know what we're doing. So if you find this word by in your sentence, you probably have a passive voice sentence. Just rewrite it. If you want, you don't have to. If it's real short, it's probably not a huge sin. Uh, well, it's not a sin anyway, but if, if it's real short, it's probably not gonna be, you know, like this probably would have been okay. Uh, but as an example, I just wanted to show you that. Try to use active voice. Make sure that the, make sure that the, per, that the action is done by somebody, I guess is the solution there. Okay, um, an expletive construction. Um, there are four officers who report to the captain. All right, Mason, since I know your name, I'm going to pick on you again. You're a good sport. So, Mason, in this sentence, there are four officers who report to the captain. What is that word there? What is that word doing in that sentence? What's the meaning of that word? You're right. There is no meaning. Way to go. Everybody give it up for Mason over here. The word there means there, okay? That's what we mean. It's a direction. It's a place. 
in X, when you put it in the first of the sentence, it doesn't, there's what? You can't do it. So this one, search for the word there. If it's at the beginning of the sentence, just rewrite it. It's simple. They're all simple. It is also a problem at the beginning of a sentence. It is freezing this morning. What's the, what's the word mean in that sentence? Silence? Good, you're all right. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. So, start sentences with words other than there or it. Also, that happens in the middle of sentences too. So, I might say, because it was cloudy on Sunday, there was a chance of rain. Still a problem in the middle of the sentence. Do all your searching for there while you're searching for this and it's, or it, I guess, uh, and rewrite if you need to. Rewrite if you need to. The best way to do this, I think, is just write and then do this editing later so you don't, so you don't stop yourself. All right, expletive construction. I had a couple come to Jesus meetings with my students over this today, college freshmen. They should be doing this. I've been telling them for four weeks, and some of them just are ignoring me. They're paying good money to ignore. Okay. Words have two meanings. There's the meaning that you find when you look it up in the dictionary, a denotation. And there's the connotation, which is the meaning of the word as it's been used over time and accepted. So in this example I gave you, she was sneaky when it came to handing out compliments. Sneaky can mean two things. It can mean somebody who's malicious, you know, like a thief might be sneaky or tricky, kind of fun. Uh, we're not exactly, in this one I think it's tricky, but we don't know. We don't know. So when you come across a word like that, make sure that you understand that a reader might say it, see it one way, and it might be different than the way you actually meant to write the word. All right. It's important in that regard to have someone read your read your essay because they might pick that up. Remember, who's your worst editor? You are. Okay. The annotation connotation. All right. So that's a, that's your all those little ideas. This will be on the video. I hope you that if you use those, it helps. Okay. So next thing is we hit this a little bit earlier. Um, make this your essay, not mine, not Candy's, not Carrie's. Make it yours. It's not your parents' essay. It's not the people who even edit your essay. It's your essay. So you can make it personal. And the examples you'll see, it's very important to connect that personal, that personal thing that may have happened to you, you may have experienced in some way, to what the scholarship essay prompt wants. So if we go with the character prompt, if we go with the character prompt, maybe you're going to tell a personal story that reveals something about your character. All right. Uh, I've always been, you know, I've always been happy or something, or I've, you know, I've always been I've always persevered through things. Then you tell us a story. So it's okay to have emotion and passion. All right. It's okay to have that as long as it's in balance. As long as it's in balance. Um, so in school, I'm sure you've learned logos, ethos, pathos. I'm sure you've learned about that and to try to keep those in balance. Sometimes I think we kind of overreact that they don't have to be an equal. Th those three things do not have to be there equally, you know. I mean, you have to be logical. Your essay should be reason. There should be reason in your essay. You have to be credible. You can't be making things up. But you can also be emotional. Okay, emotional. Um, so that emotion might be joy. It might be sadness. It might be uh, any emotion. Don't don't be afraid to 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 do to use them, okay? So when you use details and examples, you have 500 words, but if you're going to tell a story that is a clincher to tell me that you're perseverant, that, you're, that your character is this, you need to get the details of that story 
correct and detailed enough that I understand the story. So, you know, if I told you a story, if I insist in my opening that I'm that I have perseverance, and I tell you, because one time I thought I was going to flunk a test, but I studied hard and passed it and moved on. And eh. so here's my story. Okay. What was I mean, my teacher, what was I wearing? You know, all, all kinds of details that bring me right into that classroom where you're sweating bullets because you don't think you're going to pass this test. And then you do because you studied hard. You were up late. Your mom's screaming at you, go to bed. But you'd have to pass this test. Those are the kind of, those kind of details are really important. All right, really important. All right. Here's your perspective. I'm going to give it to you. Don't whine. Do not whine. You know, if you if if you have overcome something, tell it straightforward, the truth, but don't whine about it. Okay. All right. Um, and and try to stay positive. Okay. Try to stay positive. Well, I was persevering, but then oh my God, this happened, and oh my life is trash. And don't don't go there. Okay. Um, so. Keep good perspective. Keep positive perspective on this. I have to tell you, every year, I don't read these essays, but every year the people that do read, they tell me that there's always tears when they read these. There's always tears. There's always laughter. There's all, you know, and, and I, when I hear that, I, I'm, I am overjoyed because I think, you know, students have really told us who they are. Our lives have all that. Our lives have joy. Our lives have sadness. And, and the stories that they tell bring that. So they've done their job. They have done their job. All right. So be real and be honest. Okay. And I, this is a nice, nice quote by George Worth. Okay. So there's a little, you guys, you guys done this? You did this in school in English class? No? Okay. That's a yes, Mason? Pretty excited about it? <laughs> okay. I just put this into the guys' pretty colors. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, you've heard the phrase, don't sweat the small stuff? I'm telling you, sweat the small stuff. It makes it important. If I am reading your essay, and in the first sentence, you misspell the word the, uh, you know, it's going to stick with me. It's going to stick with me. So details are really important, not just punctuation, but what are you saying? Okay. Warm paint colors like red and pink can have a stimulating effect on a room's inhabitants. Okay. You know, nice paint uh, makes people happy or something. It's not good enough. Do the details here. Do the details. Okay, if, when going to a formal dinner, it's important to wear your best clothing. Why not, when going to a formal dinner, wear your best shoes, ties, tie, uh, wear your best suit, tie, and shoes. Details, details. John threw down a dun thunderous dunk over Millard West 6-7 center. Wow, I get a picture. John could jump high. I got nothing. I have nothing. Higher than what? You know? Or was he high when he jumped? I mean, what is it? What are we talking about? So if you have details, if you have details, you're painting a picture that the reader of your essay cannot, cannot deny one way or the other, okay? So, details. These are just some other ones. I don't have to read them, but <clears throat> when you read these sentences, you get a really good idea of when you go camping, if I said pack first aid supplies, then I name them. Then I get a picture of the, you know, the bandages, the antiseptics, things like that. So same in the second sentence. Name names. All right. We're going to, we're, we're going to take a, like, a, I'm about three quarters of the way done. We're going to have a little quiz. Ready? And it's an easy quiz because I gave you the answers. 
All right. Should you begin your essay with, in this essay or in my opinion, a resounding full stop? No, because if your name's at the top, whose opinion is it? Yeah, I know that. You know, I believe, no. If you say it, it's yours. So none of that stuff. Don't introduce things like that. That's not going to get my attention. You're not slapping me upside the head. You're putting me to sleep. All right. When you start that way, when you start that way. Should you research the organization sponsoring the scholarship? Yes. Should I trust only spell check and grammar check for proofing? No. Why not? Because, because from and form will both get through spell check, right? Right. So you need more than that. You need eyeballs on your news on your papers. Eyeballs. Um, I don't use Grammarly. Who uses Grammarly? Anybody use Grammarly? Is it good? Yeah. Well, that's why you know grammar costs money. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of my students use it, but <laughs> you never know by some of their papers. Um, and if they're using it, they're wasting their money, let me tell you. Should you ask, should you be focused on the money? No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You follow what they want you to do. Tell me about yourselves. You know, character issue or what prepared you for college? What did senior high do to prepare you for college? Those kinds of things. Okay, should I word, use a word from th a thesaurus? No, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Should I open with a quote? Generally, no, with exception. With exceptions. The exception is the quote is short, punchy, boop, boop. It's, it's really to the point, okay? And it, and it flows right into the next line. It flows right into the next. I would say, no, don't use a quote. Um, it's probably okay to say, if you started your things saying, I agree with, Mark Twain, when he said, golf is a good walk spoiled, all right? And if you say that, then you have, and then if you, and again, you should go right into why golf, you don't like golf. So if you can open without a quote, fine. I think in one of our examples, do they open with a quote? Somebody might, no, they open with a question, which is probably okay too. So anyway, keep these in mind. Okay, so we're at the sixth step. Kick back, all right? Chill a little bit, relax, all right? A good essay is cooked slowly, all right? It's cooked slowly. When I worked for the newspaper, every day at four o'clock was my deadline. And, you know, just to, just to get my adrenaline going, sometimes I wouldn't write a word till two, you know? I'm not recommending this. It, look at this hair, you know? I'm only 29, you know? So in order to get to where this guy is, I want to be this guy. In order to get to where this guy is, I need to start when? Early. If I start early, I have time to kick back and relax let it simmer, have my team, you're going to assemble a team, have my team be looking at it, and I can kind of chill and just see what's what's what, just see what's what. Um, I, think this, I think this is really important. The other thing that happens if you give yourself time to do this, you will think about your essay. Somebody might read it and make some suggestions. If I'm not hurrying towards the end, oh my God, am I going to make it? If I'm kicking back a little bit, I, I'm probably more open to think about things maybe I left out, maybe I want to add. So give yourself this time. Now, this could be an afternoon, it could be an hour, it could be a weekend. If you start soon enough, it could be even longer. All right. Don't get too far away from it. All right. But give it a little time to breathe. Give that essay a little time to breathe. All right. And be sure to be, look like this guy here. He's a pretty cool guy. Okay, now we're gonna talk about editing. Just because you're your worst editor doesn't mean you shouldn't edit. You should, 
okay, in beast mode. You have to be ruthless, absolutely ruthless. One little mistake can turn a whole essay around. You don't want to do that. So sweat the small stuff here. Okay, so ABC, it's yours, all right? If it doesn't sound like you, it's not you, all right? So when students, um, I've had students bring college essays to me, me uh, scholarship essays to me, who I know, these are people I know, family, friends or something, and I'll read it and I've said to them, did you write this? Like, this sounds nothing like you. And, you know, and, and in one case, it admitted to me that they tried to sound, this is what they said, I tried to sound smart, because if I sound smart, I'll get a bunch of money, you know. The goal is not to sound smart. The goal is to sound like you, right? Doing all the things that we've talked about. So, if it doesn't sound like you, it's not you. How about the rhythm? How about the language? What words are you choosing? And most of all, the story, it's your story. Nobody knows it any better than you. I don't know it any better. I can't tell your story. So do that. The last book I wrote was a biography. And so my job was to tell somebody else's story. And so fortunately, I told the story of a person who was still alive. All right. And I would go to Omaha over the course of about 18 months. I went almost every Monday and interviewed this person. And he told me his story in two and three hour chunks. And that's how I that's how I learned his story. But I could not become him. I could not become him. And so I finished the book. The book was published. People said, oh, that's really good. And it, always in the back of my mind, I said, it's still not, you know, it's his story, but it, it would have been better if he had written it, really. And he didn't want to write it. You know, it would have been better if he would have written it. Because it's his story. So tell your story. It's a good story. I know it is. Absolutely no, it is. Okay, the second thing in B is proofread and edit. There's a difference. Proofread is you're looking for typos, misspelled words, commas in the wrong place, pizza stains on, no, that's something else. Um, that's proofreading. Editing is, does this make sense? Does this phrase make sense? Is this in the right order? Have I really told my story? Do it, are there details I could put it, put in here? If I look at the whole thing, what's it, what's it, what's the tone? Am I being positive? Am I being positive? Am I a downer? All those things, that's editing. That's editing. You look at editing line by line, paragraph by paragraph, and then you look at it as the whole thing. Does this work? Is this what I want to say? And if it's not, go back and say it. No, oh, and then have three other people do the same thing. So that's four sets of eyeballs. So you got to gather a team of readers. Be thinking of people right now who could do that. People who are, who care enough about you to tell you the truth. All right. Anybody can say, hey, man, that's good. But somebody that really cares about you will say, I love you, but that's a stinky sense. Okay. Fix it. All right. People that care about you will do that. Okay. So. Rewrite it then. I like to say rewrite, rinse, and repeat. So you have, I would say three drafts would be minimum. Write one, give it out to your buddies, your family, friends, strangers, if they can help you. Do it. And then get back and then get all their notes and what they say, rewrite it. Okay, rewrite it. And then I would say you don't need to go to four people, but I would have a one and maybe two really trusted editors look at it again and then take their things and then you look at it and you change it and then you'd find one person to read it for the final copy that's going to take some time gather a group right now that is interested in you getting some of that half million dollars to go to school college is expensive i got to tell you it is really expensive so you want to do that okay C is all about the clock. You got to give yourself time to be good. Time to be good. If you don't give yourself time, it's going to seem rushed. You won't finish. You'll have an incredible beginning. You'll peter out at the end. 
uh, give yourself time to be good. All right. That takes a plan. That's a plan. You got to have a plan. Uh, I forgot the date. When's when's candy? When's the when's the uh, final date? February 8th. Okay, so you have one, two, you have three months, okay? So give yourself a Christmas present. Give yourself a Christmas present and get going. Have, have get, be going. And then you got January if you need it. But if you get things early in January, you'd be in great shape. Okay, so I just want to back that up. Okay, it's got to be yours. You got to go through this process, this editing process. It's tedious. You know, if you need Advil, if you need Tylenol, I'll take it. And then give yourself time to be good. Right. That, I, uh, that Tylenol stuff, that's for the parents, right? by the way. Okay. I went through this with my son almost 10 year, more than 10 years ago. Okay, here's the thing about the word. Stay in your verbal lane, okay? It's really important know and understand in the in the uh, examples we're going to use there's there's a there's a essay in there where the person uses the word inoculation which is a shot but the writer uses it in such a way that it's just perfect the writer obviously knew what this word meant had used it before all right so the thesaurus is a good thing i think but you want to don't just go to try to find a different word and you might not understand because as Mark Twain said, the right word and the almost right word, there's a vast difference, all right? So please don't try to sound smart. Don't try to get big words, get the right words. Stay in your verbal lane, punctuate it correctly. You probably have seen this, this funny thing here. That actress, what's her name? Isn't that an actress? What's her name? Okay, you all fail. Okay, this is gonna kill me. Who knows that? Reese Witherspoon, thank you. Yeah, I don't know why her picture's up there. Why did I do that? Okay, let's eat. Oh my God. Let's eat, Grandpa. Okay, silliness, common save lives. They will save your, they will save your uh, essay. Commas are like tapping the brake on the car. Okay, you're not stopping. You just tapping the brake. Slow down. You want to read? Hey, slow down here. Okay. So like it, you know, you're coming to an intersection. You don't see anybody. You want to slow down a little bit. So you're coming to a part that you want the reader to. You want to slow down. Now there's some rules about that. I'm sure you all learned those in high school in your class, in your high school classes. But sweat the small stuff. Okay. So. <clears throat> I'm going to read these to you because this has to do with the rhythm of your sentences. Sometimes, sometimes we get worried that our sentences are too long, like a run-on sentence. A run-on sentence is simply a sentence that uses a comma where there should be a period. Okay. Yeah. It rained, I swore. Okay, that's a run-on sentence. It rained, period. I swore, period. It rained, comma, and I swore. That's a sentence. But if I don't put any punctuation in there, it's a run-on sentence. The idea that it's long, sometimes they are. So we have this thing about writing shorter sentences. Well, don't write in shorter sentences. Don't write in long. Write in the sentences that are the right rhythm for what you're saying. So listen to these, sent these two things. The first paragraph, the sentences are almost all the same length. Listen to how, how this sounds. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. The sound of it drones. It's like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. You see how that, uh, after a while that, that's, no. So here's a, here's a paragraph that uses sentences of all different lengths, all different lengths, including the first one, which is a single word or two words rather, it's a command. Now listen, I vary the sentence length and I create music, music. The writing sings, it has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, the harmony. I use short sentences and I use sentences of medium length 
And sometimes, while I am certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length, a sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo. The roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbals, sounds that say, listen to this. It is important. See how beautiful that is? You know, and it's just, it's, I mean, you could take that apart and put it in sentences that are almost all the same, but that really, that really sings. So I want you to, one of the things you do is look at the length of your sentences and vary them, vary them, all right? Ray Bradbury, uh, Fahrenheit 451, yeah, Dandelion Wine. Ray Bradbury were, read a short story called Long Walk to Forever. And the first word, the first line of his story was one word, and then it was two words, and then it was three words, and then it was four words. And, and so he, as he walked, I'm sorry, the first one was a really long line, and then they got shorter and shorter, and he was walking and telling this story. And as he was, the story was going on, the sentences got shorter and shorter. And so the reader is sped up until the end. It's just like the movie, I'm dating myself here, your parents will understand it, Jaws. You know, when, the, when you hear the music and you know the shark's around, if you consider how long those, they get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until blood, you know. But it's all about the rhythm. It's all about the rhythm. So put some of that in there. Put some of that in your writing. Okay, last thing. Assemble a good flight crew, parents, siblings, trusted friends, teachers, word nerds, all right? Assemble a group of people that are gonna support you in this endeavor, if only to say, way to go, okay? But also people who might wanna be involved, okay? So, you know, your parents are really good about that sort of thing, but maybe have siblings, good friends. I, you know, I'm not sure if your teachers would, how much they would be involved, but you could, you could ask them if, if they'd wanna be involved. And then anybody whose who's writing skills you would trust, I would do that. When I wrote at the newspaper, I knew I had an editor and I knew that he had a boss who was also an editor. And I had other writers around me all the time and it was a very supportive atmosphere. It was a very supportive atmosphere. I still write for an online newspaper and I don't have that. You know, I have me. My wife proofreads, but she doesn't like me anyway. And so... No, I'm teasing. She likes me. So I have her, but a good fly crew is great. And now you have the opportunity to do that in your situation where you are now. You know, uh, Aside from teaching uh, at Hastings College, I work part of the day in a place called Studio 200, where you, people can bring their papers and their projects, and we help them with it. And what we are is we're the flight crew. There's about, depending on who's there, uh, we have some graduate students, some faculty members, and we're in there, there might be six to eight of us. Students can bring these things in. We're the flight crew, okay? We help them we, and, and we care about them. So we say, that's a stinky sentence. Get that out of there. You know, so you need to do that. You need to assemble the crew, all right? And don't have them write it for you, okay? I was telling a friend, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's an old journalist about it. He worked for Newsweek magazine. And, I, and he, I told him what I was doing, and, I, and he said, behind the parents not to write this for their students. And I said, I said, okay, but I will know that. Are you, I'm sorry, you would know that. It's not yours. You know, it'd be yours, not his, right? You, you, we're just not going to do that. So support, but don't do it. Support, but don't do it. Um, and the other thing about it is, I can't tell you how good it is I still get this feeling how good it is to finish something that I've done. I have my name on it. I have my name on it, and that's me. That's me. When you write something down, that's you. All right, so be good at it. All right. Okay, and then soar. Soar, this will be, this will be good. Okay, so we want to do these first before I do the final review. Okay, so in... Yeah. Yep, should be on there. 
Do you have one something you can like? You can use my iPad if you want. You good? Okay. It starts uh, since childhood. So read through that real quickly, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. You find it. Okay, go down a little bit. Is it you said scholarship guidelines, Candy? No, I'll talk about it. Go down a little as a workshop. Hmm. Help us, Candy. You guys got it? Good. You got it? Nope. Not much help. I'm gonna, they need. In that first, um, go back to that first, what we do. I think it's up. I'll go down a little bit. I think you were there. Yeah, scholarships. Uh, no, wait, scholarships. Yeah, one more to scholarships. There you go. Okay, scroll down. Oh, I got the same workshop. Yep. And scroll down. Scroll, there you go. 1A. So we're on 1A. Very good. Thanks. Thanks, Candy. So. Did you say? Did you say you could flip this? Okay, <laughs> this is all backwards. <laughs> did you really? He's going to be 30 in March. <laughs> he couldn't wait. And then later, he couldn't wait to get out. So I... Thank you. I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll visit about this a little bit. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this one. My thoughts, just I'll just throw these out and see what you, you think. Obviously, this is there's a personal story here, a nice personal story. A lot of optimism written into this one. And the writer, I think, did an excellent job connecting things in this in the essay, connecting experience to choices, future choices, career choices. <clears throat> any thoughts? Anybody have any thoughts on this one or questions or anything? Okay. Why don't you read the next one, which is 1B. 1B. The prompt is uh, the same. Personal narrative shows a requiring essence and an application to find everybody else. All right. Yeah. 
that's regardless of Okay, this personal narrative has to do with a singular experience uh, of running and, and overcoming being sick and still training. So the theme is paid off. Perse there's a theme of perseverance and it's paid off well, okay? And at the, um, at the you know, connecting connecting running to what happens later in her life and what has happened through her life. She was, I believe, 12 when this happened. Okay, <clears throat> so the skill and the skills go to the theme of perseverance. And she wasn't afraid to be descriptive. So she loses her, loses her breakfast on the sidewalk, you know? I mean, she didn't get inappropriate with that, but we still got the idea. We still got the idea. So uh, did you all hear what Candy said? Uh, the personal narrative is required in all the all our scholarships. And, okay, so let's go on to the next one. This was uh, this was the Kaufman Cummings. The Kaufman Cummings, um, and we talked about this as, during the night. Uh, have you how have your four years at Grand Senior High shaped your character, prepared you for college? So this is a little a little different take on this one. All right. Okay, so um, I made reference to this. This is really a well-written essay. It's really structured well because I merely know what I'm going to be talking about is competence. Okay, and then the writer, he tells me, I, I got confidence at senior high. This is how I did it. And then he tells the story of how he did it. Okay, and, and says, and then makes this universal point, no matter what happens, no matter if, if I get this thing I want, I still have confidence if I get it or not, which is which is an excellent, excellent point. Good word choice, really well written, some great clarity and economy in this. This is a good one. It's a good example. I was talking about a conciseness and clarity and carefulness with word choice and everything. Even though I used there in one sentence, I can overlook it. Because I'm so but I'm so benevolent. Okay, let's go to the let's go to the last. That's a example, same, uh, same prompt, Cop and Cummings prompt.
one of the things I like about this one, as well as the structures, I, in the first paragraph, I'm told this is kind of a road trip. This her 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 road trip through high school, uh, all her schooling actually, but professionalism, academics, and leadership. Those are the three things, and then she's and then she tells us those those things, you know. So she pays it off. Okay, it, it's important if you're going to say something early in a, in the essay that you pay it off later, so people know that uh, it's very well organized in that regard. And she has tremendous enthusiasm in her writing. There, you know, there's kind of a it's not bubbly, but I could tell she's really excited about the next stage of her life because, per the prompt, she's saying because this is how Grand Line Senior High shaped me, you know, you know, princess at, uh, at other schools. So it came around, came around to that. I really, I thought she did a nice job with that. Some good examples. As Candy said, these will not be up. So, okay, I'm gonna review. So it is a process, all right? It is a process once you get a plan in place, stick with it. Reading is believing. Make sure you know exactly what it is you're going to do, what you're applying for, that you're eligible for it, and that you fit all those, you, know, you check all those boxes. Make, a, make your plans, know your stuff, do your research. This will be important in scholarships where you need to know something about, for example, the person that the scholarship's named for, maybe the organization that is sponsoring the scholarship, all those kinds of things. And part of that is who's going to read it, and, uh, and how they'll make the assessment. Then in the writing part, clear, concise, and careful writers, be who you are, be honest about who you are, give yourself time to cook it slowly, and then just edit the beans out of it. Really take a hard look at it and have a team that'll help you do that. And then you don't have to do this solo. Get your team involved and you're gonna have a great essay. I just know. Okay, thanks for your attention. It's been good talking to you all tonight. Thank you. I just want to say, um, our contact information at the foundation is on the bottom of this very first thing. If you have questions on any of these scholarships, you know, do you qualify for them? Am I thinking about this right? Any questions at all? I love talking to you guys. I love talking to you. Especially like it before February. So, <laughs> ask me in December, ask me in January, you know, um, ask any kind of questions that you have along the way. Make sure to remember um, Scholarship Fair, if you're going to remember the date, remember. December 1st. Do you think about going there? We'll go over a little bit more in depth some of the different things that we're talking about um, in the application for in and out itself. So, Thanks. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, George, mm -hmm. for putting together tonight and presenting. Thank you all for attending this evening. Again, do not hesitate to call the uh, foundation. Um, my name is Carrie. I will try to assist you. If not, Candy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here.